Hi, my name is Chris Clark. I'm a Solution Architect with Project Leadership Associates, and today I'm going to be talking about Azure RMS. So today I'm going to be talking about Azure RMS, also known as Azure Rights Management. Uh, there's the ever-changing landscape of IT that has brought this technology into the limelight lately, um, and we'll see that it's part of uh, what Microsoft offers in their cloud stack of products. What, what's driving this change is really the users, the devices that the users are using, kind of the term bring your own device, the apps that are used on the devices, and the data that can be stored in many different locations. One of the key pieces to this is, is understanding where that data is, how it's protected, if it's protected at all. So Azure Rights Management Premium is actually part of the EMS suite or Enterprise Mobility suite. Uh, the Enterprise Mobility Suite isn't exactly one product in itself, it's a collection of products. Um, these products including Azure Active Directory Premium, Microsoft Intune, again we mentioned Azure Rights Management Premium, which we're concentrating on today, and Advanced Threat Analytics. So here's a list of the top RMS use cases. We have control of sensitive data through email, internally and externally. We have document tracking, revocation, we have controlling of the download of files within SharePoint. Um, we'll be able to see some of these during the demo, but this gives a good idea of some of the top RMS use cases. But one of the keys is, is understanding the value that RMS can bring to an organization and then finding use cases. Once you find those use cases, you can apply them to the features of RMS, and that's where um, the value of the overall rights management suite comes into play. Azure RMS is, actually has two different components. There's Azure RMS for Office 365, which actually comes with Office 365 uh, plans. Uh, on the very bottom, we have those listed. And they include E3, E4, E5, and then the government versions of those and the educational versions of those. So E3 and above include Azure RMS for Office 365, which include all these features. But if you look at the differentiation between Azure RMS Premium, which is part of the Enterprise Mobility Suite, the couple extra features that you get above and beyond Azure RMS for Office 365. So one of those being Windows File Servers, uh, FCI. So what this is, is if you have a 2012 or 2012 R2 file server, you can automatically protect files based on attributes within the file. Um, also, keywords that, that might be within a file that are triggering um, confidential protection. So if, if you have social security numbers, you have uh, PII, you have credit card information, um, all those are different triggers that automatically will take uh, RMS templates and apply them to it. So it, it takes a lot of the user guessing and user involvement out in that regard, which helps you enforce your policy. Users can also track their documents, so that's an extra uh, Azure RMS Premium feature. They can also revoke access. You can even set an expiration date for documents that are protected by RMS, sort of like a uh, self-destruct mechanism. The other features that are, are very useful is being able to integrate with Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive for Business. And there's also on-premises connectors for the same workload. So if you have Exchange 2010 and above or SharePoint 2010 and above, you're able to install a connector on a member server and then protect uh, those different workloads as well. RMS offers the ability to bring your own key, but by default, Azure RMS will provide uh, the encryption key. And everything is managed within the RMS infrastructure instead of having to have your own certificate infrastructure on premises and the uh, engineering know-how or expertise that goes along with maintaining that type of infrastructure. Um, administrators can also create departmental templates. Uh, what this allows you to do is we'll see where we view the templates. Um, users in a certain group will be able to view the templates that make sense to them instead of seeing the global templates for the entire company. The topology of Azure RMS, we can see we have the RMS connectors for the various Exchange workloads, SharePoint, and the file server protection. Windows Server Active Directory is synced to Azure Active Directory um, using AD Connect. AD Connect was also referred to as DirSync or AAD Sync. It's um, 
We've changed its name a fair amount of times, but uh, the all-encompassing uh, program now is called AD Connect, which uh, basically provides the directory synchronization for Azure Active Directory, so you can sync your on-premise Active Directory users and attributes to Azure Active Directory. So one of the key pieces to planning for Azure RMS is, is understanding the features that it does provide and how you can implement them. So really just a small step that you can take is to implement you know, one or two features of Azure RMS, pilot them within your organization. You don't have to have an overall security solution out of the gate, but being able to see these features, implement them kind of a step-by-step -step process allows you to see the value in either the licensing that you've already purchased with Office 365, or also if you have the Enterprise Mobility Suite, you have the RMS Premium in which you can pilot those features as well. So what the RMS templates allow you to do is set custom permissions. Um, so if I click into Manage Your Rights Policy Templates, I have a template here called Vendor Quotes View Only, and then I have two other templates. So by default, Azure RMS will have two default templates, but you can choose to archive them, which will actually unpublish them from the Office application so users can't see them. Once I do that, if I create a custom template, which I did here, I have it published so users will be able to see this uh, within the Office applications, within SharePoint, and within an Exchange environment as well. So I'm going to click on the template here and go to the Rights section. And under the Rights, if I go to Edit, we can see that we have some default rights that are selectable, very similar to public folders where you have viewer, viewer, co-author, uh, co-owner, but also custom rights. So if I click into custom, we can get an idea of the type of rights you can assign. So I have just view content as, as this uh, RMS template. So um, the idea behind this RMS template is to have uh, sales quotes that we want to send to our outside partners. Um, one of the aspects of that is maybe a sales quote is only valid for 30 days. So I can actually set the expiration for that sales quote and also I can set it to essentially self-destruct at that point as well. So setting these custom permissions on the sales quote example, we can see some of the other features besides the actual permissions on the file itself. So if I close out and go over to the configure section, the the templates themselves are localized with uh, different languages as well. So if you're a global company working in different locations, your users will be able to see it in their localized language. You can see as I scroll down here, there are some extra options besides just the permissions. So content expiration is, is a great uh, set of features, being able to set it to never expire, set a date for expiration, and also set the number of days. Content expiration is an area where I've set the content to expire after 30 days, being, being a sales quote to my vendor. There's also an offline access area where content is available only with an internet connection. Now what this allows you to do is actually kind of guarantee uh, the, the user that you're sending the document to has to authenticate to Azure RMS to even view the document. So if you don't have the settings set to um, only available with an internet connection, there's a possibility that their credentials are cached and they can open the document offline. So this is a very highly secure feature you can implement in order to guarantee that only users in real time are accessing your documents with the correct authorized credentials. So I'm logged into Outlook as uh, a user Chris Clark at chrisclarklab.com and I want to send a sales quote securely to Elon Musk uh, who's one of my partners or vendors uh, that's expecting the sales quote. So I have drafted an email that I want to send to Elon here. So on this machine what, what's been installed already is the RMS sharing app and what the RMS sharing app allows you to do is to have additional plugins into Office to share documents directly from your desktop or share documents directly from the Office applications. Within this email here, I have uh, the draft email again, and I'm just gonna attach my file like I normally would. And I have my sales quote on the desktop. 
And now that it's attached, I can click the share protected area. So there's share protected, but there's also under options, there's a permission area as well. So you'll see that RMS template shows up here, vendor quotes, view only. So I can easily choose that this way, or there's a different way to do it with the sharing app. So it's kind of up to the user to choose the way that makes the most sense to them or is easiest. Um, but I'm gonna choose the RMS sharing app add-in. So I'm gonna go back to the message tab, share protected. And what this does is it launches the RMS sharing app again, which is integrated with the Office Suite um, either Office 2010 uh, and above. And it already knows that I'm emailing Elon, so it, it took the uh, recipient information. But if I scroll down, we can see that we have some of those permissions that we saw by default with the, the RMS template uh, edit screen. But if I scroll down further, uh, here's my vendor quotes. So what this allows me to do is set a couple extra options using the sharing app versus using the permissions area we saw before. One of these is allowing me to instantly revoke the document. So I can go into a portal and revoke access to the document if, if need be. And then also I have a workflow or email notifications when the user opens a document and I'm able to see more of an audit trail of everything that's going on after I share their document. So I'm gonna click send now. So because I already drafted the email and used the RMS sharing app, the email just flowed through out to my outbox just like normal. So I'm gonna switch over to Elon's PC and see what we receive with the incoming email. Because Elon is a partner that I, I commonly send vendor quotes to, he also has installed the RMS sharing app. So as you can see, there's a track usage button up here that we'll go over in just a minute. But also if I were to compose a new email, it would also have the RMS sharing capabilities as well. When I get this email, I can double click the email and there are two attachments. So the attachment uh, looks like a normal Word document, but there's also a uh, PDF attachment. So this is a secure PDF attachment that will be used for the RMS sharing app on mobile devices. Currently, uh, Microsoft is incorporating Azure RMS into the Office mobile suite, but as kind of a fail safe, you're able to view the PDF as well. So if I open the sales quote, again, we only had view rights to this. So technically I should only be able to view it. I should not be able to copy anything. I can't print the document. I can't save it anywhere without keeping the same rights and we'll see that the permissions are throughout the office suite. So what this allows you to do is view the current permissions that are assigned with the document. So if I click on view permission, I can see that I have only view access to this document. And the way to prove this is if I select any text here, I right click, I can't copy. So if I go to the file tab, I can't print, I can't save as, and I can't export as a, another file type. So it's truly blocking the access to the document, and this protection stays with the document. So that's one of the key features with Azure RMS. So you might be using encryption, you might be using um, other means of protecting documents uh, as is or in transport, but this stays with the document no matter where it is, and you have to authenticate to open the document. So that's a key differentiator with Azure RMS versus other uh, protection mechanisms. So if I look at my inbox, I can see that the document was protected and shared. Um, also a uh, audit trail for just initiating the Azure RMS process. And then also that Elon Musk was granted access. And when you go to the track usage portal, this is actually in preview at this moment um, of the videotaping. And because of this, the features might change, but uh, overall, the, the features allow you to revoke the document, view the document, who's viewed the document, and actually see even what section of the country that user is from. So very useful information, and you can export it to CSV as well. So I also have another virtual machine that I'm going to copy the same RMS protected file to and show that the protection actually travels with the document. So I'm going to take the document that was in Outlook and save it to my desktop. And again, protection goes all the way from when it was protected until it's revoked. So at no point in time is the document unprotected. And again, you have to authenticate in order to 
access the document. So if I look on the desktop here, I'm going to take this document, copy it, and copy it to the other uh, PC, which represents either another location or a user's home PC. So when I paste it in, the user that's logged into this PC uh, is unknown, really, at, the, at this point in time. So they're not an Azure RMS user where they can authenticate. So if I double-click the document, I don't have permission to access the file. So again, the, the great feature of this is the permissions stay with the document. And as you can see in this case, there's no way you can access the document without being able to authenticate to the Azure RMS service. Again, I'm Chris Clark with Project Leadership. Thank you for attending the session. You can reach me at cclark at projectleadership.net.